I've been studying the Pantheon since 2004 because I'm interested in how a space that is a church is also at the same time a monument and a museum uh, and uh, an ancient Roman building and evokes many different responses from many different visitors. In fact, many people who visit the Pantheon also visit the Sistine Chapel. And I happen to be sitting under a reproduction of Michelangelo's famous artwork here. Many people who visit the Sistine Chapel do have some kind of profound experience, some kind of insight or revelation or transformation that affects how they live their lives. We might call this a spiritually significant experience. Other people who visit the Sistine Chapel don't have such an experience. It may be a rich tourism experience. Uh, it may be an experience uh, akin to being at a museum, but it's not transformative in a, in a strong way. The same is true in the Pantheon. Some people who go through the Pantheon never forget it, and it affects how they live their lives when they leave the space. Other people go through the Pantheon and are not able to remember five minutes later what it was like. It's hard to believe, but that kind of diversity actually exists in what I think of as underspecified spiritually significant spaces. In other words, there's not one controlling experience that everyone has, and there's not one controlling authority that determines the experience everyone's going to have. We're here in New York City right now, and in New York City, I can think of many different spaces that I'm curious about as to whether they are underspecified, spiritually significant spaces. And an approach that is analogous to that that I'm taking in the Pantheon could be introduced in a dialogical spirit and with humility in approaching these spaces and trying to comprehend them. I'm thinking, for example, of the Oculus at the World Trade Center, a space that lets in light through the ceiling every September 11th and that is uh, named, in fact, after the open space at the top of the Pantheon that itself lets in light and air and, in fact, rain and sometimes snow. But I'm also thinking of a space like Zuccotti Park, which is a privately owned public space, but that was repurposed by protesters in 2011-2012 for Occupy Wall Street. And continues to play a spiritually significant part in the recollections of many of those who participated in that protest. And in fact, at that protest, there was a shrine and an altar, and spiritual discourse, religious conversation, for many was part of the motivation for being involved in that protest. I'm thinking of a space like the African Burial Ground National Monument, where it's a space that is circular, like the Pantheon, and that invites you to walk in a, in a planned path through, to take a journey through it, like the Pantheon, and that is also a potential transformative experience. All these things can be part of our curiosity about how underspecified, spiritually significant spaces work, because part of the power of these spaces is their invitation to a range of people to come and have a range of experiences there, to make room for people who are there to have their lives changed, and to make room for people who are just passing through.